How's everybody doing after this fine Christmas that we just had? You know, God bless you and welcome to Well. Today on Well, we're going to talk about a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that is childhood literacy and the importance of reading to and with our children. Now, my question is, uh, right now I'm doing a poll on, on LinkedIn. Check it out. And the question is, and this, this comes from you know, my own experience and things that I'm working on currently, plus a conversation I heard yesterday when it was discussed whether you know children read more now than they used to, or is due to technology, are they reading far less and are they not getting you know enough um tutelage and they're focusing so much on the and we're we're depending so much on the technology to teach them and to entertain them and educate them that they're actually possibly being undernourished when it comes to when it comes to um, reading and literature. So let's kind of get into that conversation today here on Well. Now, I just heard, read a really interesting um, comment, you know, from a teacher um, from it. And, and, and she really just kind of really highlighted a lot of the things that I've heard people highlight and some of the things I've seen myself. Now, I'm going to use myself as an example. Now, just in the past several years of my life, I've really got, you know, regenerated back into, you know, um, seeking out, you know, the written word and, and, and you, know, you know, forcing myself to read. And because here's the thing, I literally, literally for most of my adult life, well, all of my adult life, just, you know, all of my adult life really did not like reading. And it stems from my later school years and, and my earlier school years for that, you know, to be honest with you, because here's what happens. You know, we have a system that's that's you know curated for a specific type of teaching and, and and to educate in a specific type of way. And if you fall outside of those parameters, you'll typically struggle and you'll typically you know fall between the cracks. So myself, when I was a child, my father he 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 you know surrounded me with books, encyclopedias, and everything. You know, when I was a little child, when I was a little child. And so I, I really, you know, most of the time I spent the time looking through the books until I learned how to read. And then, you know, I started reading and between my father and my sister, they would read, you know, my, my sister would read with me and my father would provide the, the literature for me. And so I thought nothing of it was just regular, it was just standard. You know, so I read at my own, at my own pace. You see what I'm saying? I read at my own pace and my own pace was my comfort, my comfort zone of reading. And so as a young child, you know, I read a lot more and I forgot that I read as much. You know, I read, you know, like like Garfield comics. And when we had this, you know, the school scholastic book drives, you know, two or three times a year, I always made sure to stack up on as many books as I could. Now, here's what happened, though, because the pace of my reading wasn't where the status quo was, because the way that I like to read, I like to read, digest, analyze, overanalyze and really spend time in my reading. Well, the system that they were that they were training and programming all the children with was to speed read and you know, re- just rush through the material and don't digest and you know, just rush through this particular material. It wasn't interesting to me. So for a lot of years, reading became very, very uncomfortable for me. It became it became something that I, that I dreaded, something that I didn't like to the point where I stopped reading. I stopped reading. You know, and for a long time, I went, you know, I did not read. And, and, I, and it, was, it was to the point I knew how to read, but I dreaded it so much where I literally hated to read. You know, I literally hated to read because it was always such a, it was such an intolerable situation when it came to me being forced to read. So I look at myself, you know, and I look at, you know, you know being forced into a system that, that, that really, you know, squoes the, the, the enjoyment of reading out of me. And then I look, you know, and then, you know, then cable TV came around for, for most kids, you know, not, not for us as much, but for most kids, but then, you know, then we did get cable and then, you know, there was more things to watch and there was more, you know, you know, then VCRs came around and there was more movies to watch and there was more things to take your focus away from reading. Okay. None of that is the reason. None of that is the excuse because here's the thing. Here's what, here's what happened with me and I'm seeing it happen um, with with other kids, but unfortunately, other kids have it worse than me because you know I still had a father, you know, who who encouraged you know 
me to be educated, who encouraged, you know, further education, who encouraged the seeking of knowledge. And, you know, he even gave example to that effect. And so I had the benefit of that. A lot of children do not. So consequently, you know, I look at children, you know, fast forward to the day and some of the issues that I see faced. I do see a lot of parents, almost every parent I know, almost every parent, not all of them, just a lot of them <clears throat> that have children really do not mandate their children to read. They don't provide the environment for them to read. They don't provide the literature for them to read. They don't, they don't, they don't, I mean, and, and they're dependent upon the technology to basically take care and tend to the children. Well, you know, here's the thing. I'm not going to blame it on the technology myself because the technology, you know, I mean, because to be honest with you, they could be reading books on the technology. But what's happening is this is a parent issue. This is not a child issue. I'm a, I'm going I'm to put it right there. Personally, I, I personally feel this is a parent issue. This is not a child issue. It's not the issue of the children, you know, not digesting something that they should be digesting. It's about the environment that the parent is creating or not creating for the children to read. Case in point, are parents reading with children? <clears throat> you know, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing I'm not just talking about in my own personal sphere of influence. I'm talking about, you know, across the board. Parents aren't reading to and with their children. You know, and this is where it begins. You know, as a as a you know, some some are. Here's the thing. If you're doing it, great. You're not you're not the ones that are not doing it. Unfortunately, far more are not doing it than are doing it. So what this is creating, this is creating that 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 love and enjoyment for reading is not being it's not being created and cultivated in our children. That's the issue. The 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 enjoyment of reading. That's what that's my point. You know, so well, you know, hey, I want you to chime in on this. Let's have a conversation. You know, but my point of view is the enjoyment of reading is not there, you know, for 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 our children. And this right here is where the issue is. So reading becomes an obligation, a responsibility, a job, as opposed to, you know, an enjoyable, pleasant, pleasurable situation for you to seek out. You know, case in point, you know, you know, everybody uses the TikTok. TikTok is, is you know, is, is, a, is, a, is a platform and, you know, and it has an algorithm that draws people in, not just children, but grown adults, you know, spend way more time than they should. But here's the thing. The only reasons they're able to do that is because they already know how to control, how to capture and control attention and awareness. And this is where we're dropping the ball as parents and grandparents. We're not mandating to capture our children's attention early in life. You know, we're not reading to them and reading with them. And we're not creating an environment where there are books present and where we're giving them the time and the environment to, to, to you know, touch the books, feel the books, you know, for the books to be part of their playtime, for the books to be part of their playtime and enjoyment. See, this is how, this is how, you know, we cultivate a, a you know, a reading culture, you know, amongst our children. And so this is, you know, we have to step back. It's not the kid's fault. I'm not comfortable with people allowing this fault to fall on the children. It's not their fault for the environments that are created around them. Let's just let's, I'm gonna say that again. It is not their fault for the environments that are created around them. It is the responsibility of the parents in the situation to make sure to cultivate that said environment around their children. You know, and this is the and this is the thing. Everybody reads at a different level and a different speed. And this is the problem that, that we face. When we send them to school and put them into the system, they require them all to be at the same level, and they're not. So you have the kid, the one or two kids in the class that read at a high level, and you have the kids at the bottom that read at a very low level, and you have the kids in the middle that are, you know, struggle back and forth one way or the other. But then, you know, the system pushes all the kids to follow the lead of the ones who are reading at the top level. Well, they can't do that, you know. And the reality of it is, is it's not, it's not. It's, it's not conscionable to make them do that. It's important to evaluate our children at home first. At home first, evaluate how they learn, you know, you know, and communicate that to the educators that we send them to. If we're going to send them to educators, it's important to have that parent teacher relationship that says, OK, you know, this, you know, I got two children. And I'm bringing them to your school. You know, this, you know, this child, you know, child one learns this way. This child you know, two learns this way. 
and follow up with them. Maintain, you know, and back and forth. You know, when they get there, you know, don't let them just don't just trust them. You know, throw them in the water and trust them. You know that they're going to learn to swim. You know, we have to teach them to swim. We have to teach them to swim. And this is becoming uh, like a passion for me over the past five, you know, five, almost six years. You know, I just kind of eased back into, you know, my affinity for literature and for reading just by accident. I just, you know, sat down one night, you know, it was a long night, you know, I was working a, a night job and, and I was, you know, I was frustrated with the, with the social situations that we were having. And I wrote a short book. I just wrote a short story. I just wrote a short story just to, just to pin to get, I, it was for myself, it was just to, and I was, I was thinking about my grandchildren, I had my grandchildren in mind, I'm like, I'm going to write this story for my grandchildren so my grandchildren can read it and I can read it with them and, you know, so they can understand, you know, you know, what's going on with this social issue that we're having. And so I just sit there and wrote it and I wrote it and I put it, I put it out on, you know, and, and you know, a couple people saw it and I'm like, yeah, that's interesting. And then I, I, I'm like, I read it again and I, I printed it out and I took it to my father. Now my father He's, you know, he's, a, he's, you know, got more, I say he's got more degrees than a stove. You know, the reality of it is, is, you know, he's high on education, high on education, very, you know, education is extremely important to him. So I, I present things to him and he, I don't present them to him for him to grade them, but he, he grades them anyway. He's going to, he's going to red, he's going to red pen it real good. So if you hand him something, just know you're going to get red pen. It's going to get edited if there's something wrong. <laughs> and this is what he does. But I appreciate it and I thank God for it. It actually, it, that's what, that's what, that's what gave me the, that's what lit the fire, really knit the flock, you know, the fire in me, you know, reignited the fire in me to say, okay, you know, hey, you know, I'm okay, this might be something, this is interesting. Okay. Oh, you enjoy it? He read it. He was like, he was like, this is good. This is good. You know, he put his edits in there, you know, he read it and, and gave it back to me. I'm like, interesting. I'm like, interesting. So I took back, took, you know, edited it and, you know, so forth. I had no intention of this being a book. It was just a short story. But as I read it and as I thought about it more and I thought, you know, you know, put it back out there and let, you know, cut, test it, you know, test it a couple places. I'm like, this is interesting. And so and then I, I formulated, you know, took it back to the to the drawing board and just, you know, I didn't change nothing. I didn't change nothing. I took his edits and just re refined it, you know, threw some illustrations on it and formed it into a, a you know, short story book. I say this because it's the intention behind it. It's the intention behind it, and, you know, and subsequently, you know, it spawned it to the point where, now my father, now he's, he's going to be 86, and his friends are like in their late 70s, and he shared it with them and my aunts and everything, and they all love it. And so, and this, and to, the, to, this, to this day, it's still my best-selling book. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is it was birthed out of frustration, and it was birthed out of the recognition of my enjoyment for reading and writing in my personal life, in me, as I thought about my grandchildren in mine. OK, so, you know, this is this is kind of, you know, just kind of give you a little you know insight to you know what I'm saying. You know, we have to say, well, you know, why are our children not reading not only like they once were, because now. Information is so easy that it's so easily accessible now more than ever. You know, you don't have to have a stack of, you know, encyclopedias like I once, you know, dreamed of. You know, for me, what, you know, one thing I, that I wanted as a child and I, I never got it because after, you know, my father had the encyclopedias for me when I was a little, when I was a little child, you know, a little child, two, three years old. You know what I'm saying? And then as we moved and he got rid of them and everything. And then and I always wanted another set of encyclopedias. That was, just, you know, Encyclopedia Britannica. You know, if I had the whole set. I always wanted that. And then, but as the, as the enjoyment for reading got squoze out of me, that went away. But as I've gotten older, I, I, and I remember back to it, you know, and I'm like, yeah, got to get back to that. Yeah. I want my grandchildren, you know, to have that, you know, have that, you know, excitement for, for, for reading as well. And so as I, you know, write these books, you know, I'm going to write all kinds of books. I don't, you know, I'm not just going to, you know, state, you know, write children's books or whatever, but a lot of my focus right now on the books that I'm writing are, you know, is, is creating content that, that, that will help them, you know, to enjoy reading. And then I, you know, I don't push it on them, you know, but I, but I also, I make it available for them. I talk to them, I, I present it to them. I let them read it, you know, I let them read it and just, you know, just let it soak in, you know, and just, you know, just kind of, you know, so it's there. So it's there. And I encourage them, you know, here, 
encourage them there. But as a culture, and we have to create an environment where all the adults around them are encouraging them to read and to not just to read, but to, you know, the enjoyment of reading. So, well, let's have a conversation. I want to hear from you on this, you know, chime in. Let's have a conversation, you know, let's 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 build on this conversation. This is not just a one off. You know, this is just this is just a, a opening to the conversation of, you know, we have to build the environment for our children, you know, in order for them to, to, to enjoy the, the, the art of reading. So let's talk about it. God bless you. Talk to you later.